Holy smokes, guys. It has been a rough day out there. We're going to break down what's going on in the stock market and the crypto market in this video. We're going to go over some earnings and how I'm actually getting through all of this madness right now. So sit back, relax, take a sip of your water, and let's just dive into the video, guys. Again, today was just a complete bloodbath, especially in the crypto market, which we'll talk about here in a couple of minutes. But first, let's take a look at the stock market, which didn't do well at all today. And this had to do a lot with uh, the uncertainty around the midterm elections. Of course, that's going to you know, lead the stock market to go red. I mean, uncertainty is the last thing the stock market likes. And we've been getting a lot of that lately, that's for sure. So the Russell went down 2.7%, NASDAQ down 2.4%, S&P down about 2 as we had the Dow down about 2%. Not to mention, tomorrow morning we have the CPI data. That's another thing the markets are not looking forward to that's causing even more uncertainty. So really bad red day all across the board, pretty much down 2% plus as the VIX went up over 2% and the metals uh, looks like silver went down 1.2 as gold went down about 0.3%. And no joke, there were only two green stocks on my watch list today. And funny enough, one of them was Meta, which we made a video about earlier today. Go talk, uh, go check that out if you guys want to see why that went up. But I'm sure you guys already saw they're laying off a bunch of employees, which is I guess good. I mean, it sucks for the employees, but it's good for the business because they're losing a ton of money or their earnings have been shrinking. And, you know, this will help, you know, it's it's going to help alleviate that, at least in the short term, right? So Meta went up on the day and Merck barely inked a green day. It went up 0.1%. So literally everything on my watch list was red other than Meta. And by the looks of it, guys, Spy, the head and shoulders here on the 20-day chart is playing out pretty uh pretty to the point you you can see it right left shoulder head right shoulder now we're under the moving averages if this get um takes out let's say 368 370 right by the lows here from earlier this month this is going to be bad for spot you know there's uh, there's probably going to be a push down to about 362 if that were to break maybe down to 356. These are the gaps on the downside, so keep your eyes on those. Uh, maybe even 348 here on SPY. So let's pull up Triple Q, then we're going to look at oil very quickly, then we'll dive into crypto. This is pretty much the same thing. We have a head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and now we're under the moving averages. And this essentially already completed by the looks of it, the head and shoulders did. And, you know, if this thing starts falling under, let's say, 259, 260, <laughs> there could be more downside from there, guys. The, uh, the selling could start accelerating. And look, we're pretty close. I mean, we're only about eight, nine points away from the low from a couple weeks ago, middle of October being about 254. So be careful, guys. Be careful. Triple Q is uh, is getting there. So let's see. Uh, what, what is it here? Crude oil. Let's pull that up. And by the way, CPI data, I forgot to mention tomorrow morning, like I said, but I forgot to mention the estimate here is 0.6% month over month increase, and that's 8% annualized. And the core CPI estimate is roughly uh, month over month 0.5%. And of course, core CPI excludes food and energy. If you guys didn't know that. And speaking of energy, oil has not been doing well the past couple of days. If I pull up the oil chart here on the 20 day and zoom in a bit, you can see this was at 93 bucks. Now it's at 85 a barrel. It is down 8% in just the past two days, almost three days here. So that is a big drop. And that's probably due to the midterms. Uh, you know, there's probably some uh, volatility due to that for sure. And you can see here overall, there is resistance. We did kind of, let's see, uh, I mean, you could say that's a double, or yeah, a double top. If I pull this up and show you guys with the oval, let's pull it up. Boom, one, two. You can see here, clear double top at about 95 a barrel. But with that being said, we're still holding a higher low at about 85, 86 a barrel. So we'll see. I mean, do we end up rallying back to 90, breaking that? Or do we dump under 85, go to 80, and then go to 76 from there? That's the million-dollar question, guys. So keep your eyes on oil. And with that being said, if you haven't gotten your $10 for Moomoo plus up to 15 stocks, each up to 2000 bucks, use that link down below, deposit at least 100 bucks, and boom, you get some free money for Moomoo. It also helps out the channel. I appreciate you all as always. So with that being said, let's talk about crypto and see what's going on here with bitcoin ethereum which just when you thought it wouldn't get worse 
it got worse. It got way worse, guys. And, and you can see here, Bitcoin right now is at sixteen thousand one hundred dollars a coin. I think yesterday when we were talking about it, what was it at? Nineteen two or maybe nineteen thousand? I forget. Now it's at sixteen one, and, and it shows that it's up one percent right now, one and a half percent. But ignore that. Bitcoin was just, uh, you know, yesterday at twenty thousand five hundred, and <clears throat> now it's five thousand dollars. Um, under that. And a lot of the selling came throughout the day um, today. So Bitcoin's falling through the floor. We have the whole FTX Binance debacle, which we're not going to get into in this video. Uh, but, you know, looking at the chart here, that's what I want to focus on. This is falling through the floor. And we're now approaching the highs from, I think, uh, what year was that? 2017? No, we already took those highs out. Yeah. Um, 2019. Yeah, right there. If you guys look at the chart here, if I zoom in a bit, back in 2017, we've covered this before on the channel, and I was actually making YouTube videos back then, believe it or not. That's when I started the channel during the whole uh, bull run in the crypto market. That's not why I started the channel, but it just happened to be there in that same time period. And that's when this ended up running to 19,000. We clearly failed holding 19,000. Now we're under that point. And if you look here at the highs from the middle of June, roughly of 2019, those were about 13, 8, 14,000, 14, 5, roughly. That's probably where we're going. Right now we're at 15, 9. That's where I think we're going. And if that were to break, guys, that could be the last straw between us and a $10,000 or sub $10,000 Bitcoin price. And that's just me being completely realistic here and just me being honest. And did I not say months and months ago I would buy Bitcoin between five to seven to 10000 you know, that general area? We could be there sooner than we know it with this whole, you know, explosion going on with FTX. <laughs> we could be there very soon. So that's why I always say patience is key, especially in, you know, speculative assets like Bitcoin. When you think something can't happen, it, it could happen, especially with something like Bitcoin. And that's what we're seeing right now. And, you know, it's completely imploding. And it's probably, if I had to guess, it's probably going to go lower, at least in the next couple of weeks. I could be wrong, but by the looks of it, it's not looking good for FTX. I feel like it's going to, you know, cause even more pressure on this uh, crypto market. So right now, Ethereum, look at it. It's at 1100 guys. It was just at, uh, I mean, just a couple days ago, not even. It was just at 1600 We were talking about it here on the channel. Now it's at, again, 1100 So this thing is down massively. We're talking, it's pretty much almost, well, not cut in half. I was going to say cut in half, but it's down a lot. Let's put it that way. It's down like 35, 40%. I mean, it's getting destroyed. And if we pop up this one hour chart or maybe the two hour, actually maybe the four hour or actually no, maybe the daily chart. There we go. Where were we back in June? Right here. Uh, we were at about 880, 900. We could be going there. You know, we could be going to test those lows for sure. And if that low were to break on Ethereum, we might even be going down to, uh, you know, it's, it's of course, under the highs from 2018. Those were at about 1,100. Uh, but if we break 1,000, we go to 900, you know, this thing could really start getting killed quickly down towards 5, 600. But we'll see. I mean, we're not obviously near 5, 600 now, so I don't want to make that call yet, uh, you know, until we start getting under the lows from June. Uh, but I'm, I'm just thinking out loud, right? And of course, we got to look at Dogecoin very quickly, which Dogecoin right now is down or I mean, it's, it says it's up one and a half percent. But over the past couple of days, it is down massively. If I pull up this 30 minute, you're going to see it uh, just a couple of days ago. Dogecoin was at almost 16 cents. Now it's at seven and a half cents. In other words, it is down over 50 percent. So yeah, I mean, this thing came back to reality very quickly, and it looks like we're getting, I mean, just guys, look at this. We're under the highs now from the middle of August. You know, the highs were eight and a half, nine cents back then. We're getting back to those lows from, you know, the September, October consolidation period. That's where we're headed back to, in my opinion, five, six cents. And that's where Dogecoin's probably going to chill unless things get really, really bad in the crypto market, which you know, it's totally possible. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And if you all want 12 stocks from this platform, which is called Weeble, use that link down below, deposit any amount of money and you get 12 stocks. And 
I also get some stocks. It helps out the channel. Full disclosure, guys. So with that being said, let's talk about some stocks, some earnings here that you guys have to keep an eye on and just watch over the next couple of days here. Rivian is one of them. Let's pull Rivian up and see what's going on. They reported after the bell today, and the stock went down 12% on the day. So it was a rough day overall for Rivian. And after the bell, it went down to 26 bucks, which was another 4 or 5% drop. Uh, and now it's actually... You know, it's since that point, it's rebounded and now it's almost at 30 bucks a share. It's actually up at this point, uh, 7% after the bell, after these earnings came out. So let's see what they ended up doing. They lost adjusted on, on adjusted EPS. They lost a dollar 57, which beat the dollar, uh, 82 loss estimate sales came in at 536 million versus 551 million. So that missed anything on guidance. Let's see here. They, they posted yada, yada, yada. There goes my dog itching herself. Ibiza, you okay? You guys probably can't hear it, but her chain, or her collar, rather, is, uh, I'm acting like my dog's chained up. <laughs> Not her chain. Her collar is making that noise. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, where was I? Guidance. I'm not seeing anything on guidance here when it comes to, or, no, wait, wait a second. It says reaffirms production guidance, adjusted EB dot outlook. That's pretty good. And anything else? I mean, look, they, they missed on revenue, which is not good for a growth company. I'm not seeing anything on revenue guidance, which I would like to see. Maybe they're, uh, you know, not not giving us that for, um, you know, on purpose. Wait a second. Here it says Rivian Automotive reaffirms 2022 production guidance of 25,000 total units produced. Not bad, I guess. Uh, also reaffirms adjusted EBITDA out outlook. So, yeah, the sales guidance mit or the sales for the last quarter missing is not good. But, you know, the stock is still moving up on the day or not on the day, but on the aftermarket, which, you know, net net, it's actually still down. I mean, it's down, it went down 12% on the day. Now it's up six after the bell. It's still down a little bit, guys, if we look at where it was at, um, you know, yesterday. So Rivian, it's not one of those companies that, you know, I'm dying to invest invest in, to be honest, but it, it, is, uh, it is a company that produces a cool product. You know, I actually do like their product. I'm not a big fan of their headlights on their trucks. <clears throat> I've said that before on the channel, but... Uh, you know, other than that, I think their products are pretty cool and they they probably do have a future. You know, they probably do have a future. Amazon has a stake, you know, a big stake in this company. Um, so it, it's, it's going to be, uh, I think one of the companies that does stick around here. We'll see. I could be wrong. I don't know, but I'm just speculating, right? So let's see what else we had Dutch bros report. If I pull this up, uh, we can see Dutch bro stock in general has not been doing well. Like a lot of stocks out there It was at 66 bucks back in March. Now it's at what, 50 uh, or 29 bucks rather. It's down 55%. That is a disaster. So let's see what they ended up doing. They did nine cents in EPS, which beat the eight cent estimate. Sales came in at 198.6 million versus 194.75 million. So they did uh, double beat by the looks of it, which is good. And they see full year 22 revenue of 725 versus 724 million. And they see adjusted EB dive at least 90 million. And, and they see, uh, or rather, they raised their 2022 revenue view. Uh, and again, revenue of at least 725 million for full year 22. So that's pretty good. And I'm not uh, sure why the stock's not moving up after that, considering it went down 9% or 9.5% on the day. Uh, it's barely budging. It's only up 50 cents or 60 cents after the bell. Not much at all. It's still down a bunch. So Dutch Bros is not getting respected, I'd say, at all after this earnings report. We'll see if that changes after uh, the next uh, couple of days here. And we'll see. I mean, I, I might have to do a deeper dive. There could be something that I'm missing. But they had a decent report. Guidance looks pretty decent. And the stock is not going anywhere looks like we also had beyond meat today guys let's see what they ended up doing and i'm sure they're down i mean when are they not down today they went down nine percent and after the bell wait a second the stock's flat look at that the stock is flat i was wrong there they're not moving down but they did miss on eps they lost a dollar 60 versus the a dollar 14 loss estimate and sales guess what 
also missed. $82.5 million versus 98.11. Oh, my God, that's a bad miss. Uh, so double miss for Beyond Meat. They're targeting cash flow, positive operations with the second half of yada, yada, yada. Uh, they see full year 22 revenue, $400 million to $425 million versus $453 million. So that's under the estimate, not good at all. So Beyond Meat, guys, I don't know if it's going to go out of business. I don't know if it's going to get bought out. I just don't know. I mean, this company was at 200 bucks a share a couple of years ago. Uh, when was that? 2018 or something like that? I mean, that's just ridiculous. 2021. Oh, my God. That, that's not even that long ago. Uh, about two and a half, three years ago. It was at $200. Imagine that. Now it's down, what, 90 95%. So I don't know if it'll go bankrupt because it does have a pretty good brand name. I mean, despite the stock being garbage, you know, even though, even though the stock's garbage, uh, you know, the, the financials might be trash. Um, the brand name is still decent. You know, you might not like the product, uh, but the brand name, you see it and you're like, oh, Beyond Meat, I know what that is. Whereas you, you might see some random, you know, other plant-based burger or some other crap, and you might not even know what it is. But if you see Beyond Meat, you'll know what that is. That, that you know, there's value there that that's worth something. Uh, but again, I don't know if it's, going to get they're going to get bought out they're going to make it through this slump i have no idea and you know it's not the healthiest of foods that's for sure uh, i'm not a vegan and i've had their product but I, even i've even heard from people that don't eat meat they don't like eating this stuff too much because of how unhealthy it actually is people that are vegan people that are more plant based they're 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 more on the healthy route in terms of they're not just going to eat processed garbage you know vegan foods all day they're going to be eating more whole foods or, you know, vegetables, plants, or not plants. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, fruits, that's what I meant. Vegetables, fruits, you know, uh, just, just stuff like that, right? You know, for the most part, and sure, they're going to have Beyond Meat here and there sometimes, but it's not a staple in, you know, every, uh, every plant-based vegan's diet, at least from my understanding, right? Let, please let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. So, yeah, Beyond Meat, that's a little little side tangent or a little point there for the, uh, on them. And we had Wynn Resorts. Let's see what they ended up doing. Wynn Resorts ended up missing on EPS, another miss, negative $1.20 versus uh, roughly negative $1 estimated. So they missed on uh, EPS. And revenue, $889.7 million, which beat the $871 million estimate. So that's not too shabby there. Let's see what else. Uh, anything on guidance? Not seeing anything on guidance. Uh, here it says operating revenue from Win Macau were $40 million, a decrease of $90 million for, uh, from $130 million from last year. So that is actually down a ton. I guess it makes sense because uh, China. Uh, but either, either way, you know, Win here still seems to be trading in this channel. It's above the moving averages, even though uh, the, the company missed on EPS there. Uh, looks like it's still holding. You know, it's holding trends. So let's see. I mean, do buyers come in here mid-high 60s? push this thing back over 70 that's the million dollar question i'm not too convinced quite yet but it's uh the, the setup looks decent so we'll see how it plays out we have to monitor it here over the next couple of days so those are four companies that reported earnings let me see what we have tomorrow morning guys make sure to uh stick on here for a couple more minutes smash that like button let's do a challenge can we get 100 likes on this video? I haven't done a challenge in a long time. Can we get 100 likes on this video? If you haven't hit that like button, hit that like button. Tomorrow morning, we have Neo. We have Six Flags. We have um, Yeti. I don't know. I mean, do you guys track Yeti? I, I kind of look at them sometimes. I'll be honest. Then we have Matterport. Uh, Poshmark. I mean, not the biggest of companies. Uh, then on Friday, we have a bunch of... Uh, I'd say companies that not many people would know, at least I don't really track them. So we don't have much going on tomorrow, but yeah, I guess Neo and Six Flags, those are worth looking at. But other than that, it's uh, it's been a it's been a good earnings, you know, past couple of weeks. You know, we'll see what we have next week. But a lot of the big companies, guys, they did end up reporting. And of course, tomorrow morning we have the CPI data. So you better be ready. Make sure to subscribe to the channel because we're going to be making a ton of content on that. And uh, it's going to be worth, you know, it's going to be worth tracking these markets because after today's huge red day, I want to see how it's going to react to these, um, you know, the, to, the, to the CPI data. Could it, is it possible that the markets could fall another 5% or another couple percentage points after today was a bloodbath? I mean, it's possible if inflation comes in higher than expected, 
we'll see. It looks like a lot of stocks are, you know, selling out or selling off, pricing that in potentially. Uh, you know, Tesla went under 180 today, down 7% on the day. Snapchat down 7%. Shopify down 6%. Baba down four or five percent. DWAC, which is Trump's back, twenty percent. Red Day, which I mean, did we not say that was going to happen? It was going to sell off. It sold off like crazy. Chewy down eight percent. So let's see, guys. Let's see. You know, it's going to be an interesting next couple of days, especially tomorrow. So make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, check out my Patreon link down below, and don't forget to get your twelve stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited and. You could also get $10 plus up to 15 stocks for Moomoo with at least a $100 deposit. All of those are linked down below. And with that being said, cheers, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.